So what I'd like to do now is give you a brief uh, update, if you will, on the 457 BC decree from King Artaxerxes. And uh, for those that hadn't had a chance to look at my other three videos, they're quite long and involved. I'm going to try to give you kind of a top, uh, top overview, if you will, of uh, the other study I had. Okay, so we, we're going to look at what's up here on the top. We're going to look at 457 and the seven last years. So the next few slides, I'm going, going to update my prior release. And uh, these links to the, my prior videos are in the, uh, the text below this video here. So here are my important dates for this, uh, this period here. The 70 weeks start in the spring of 457 BC. The seven sevens, that means 49 years. And this is a 49 year Jubilee cycle. There is no gap. Uh, immediately following the 469th week is the 70th week. So it immediately follows it. There is no gap here either. After 62 seven weeks, the 70th week directly follows, just like I mentioned. And in the middle of the 70th week, Jesus is crucified. This scenario fits perfectly with this prophecy. Now, uh, Pastor Jacob here, he recently updated his uh, thinking on this. This is from July, September 2014 from his newsletter. And let me read this for you. It says, different people have calculated differently depending on which of the three decrees Sir Robert Anderson, an astronomer and mathematician, was a believer in one of the first in the 19th century. They all came in within a year and a half of each other. The decrees of Artaxerxes, the husband of Queen Esther in the Book of Esther was 457 BC. Seven weeks later, that is seven years, seven weeks of years or 49 years later, you had the restoration of Jerusalem completed in 408 BC. Then 62 times seven or 434 years later, the Messiah would arrive in AD 27. I agree with that. Three and a half years later, the Messiah dies. He had to come and die before the second temple would be destroyed. So I agree with everything he says here, except I'm not certain about this restoration of Jerusalem was completed in 408. But that's a minor point. Everything else here, he 100% agrees with, with my uh, understanding. 457 is the start year of the 70-week prophecy. In 27 AD, Jesus started his ministry with his baptism and anointing by his Father. In the, uh, in the middle of the 70th week, Jesus is crucified in AD 30. So I'm going to read you Daniel 9, 24, 5, and 6. I'm going to insert some commentary along with the Bible text. I hope you, you know, allow me to do this. It's a little more efficient way to do it. 70 weeks, that's 490 years, are decreed for your people, the Jewish nation, and your holy city, Jerusalem, to finish transgression and to put an end to sin and to atone for wickedness and to bring in everlasting righteousness to, and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy place. No one understand this, from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jer Jerusalem until the anointed one, Jesus, the ruler, comes, there will be uh, 70 sevens, that's 490 years, and 62 sevens, 434 years. It, that is Jerusalem, will be rebuilt in the streets and a trench, but in times of trouble from their neighbors. After 62 sevens, that's 49 plus 434, that equals 483 years. So after 483 years, the anointed one, Jesus, will be put to death and will have nothing. The people of the Roman army, of the ruler Tiberius, or Titus rather, of the ruler Titus, 
who will come will destroy the city Jerusalem in 70 AD. And the sanctuary, that is the temple in Jerusalem, and the end will come like a flood, an invasion of the Roman soldiers. That's, that's, what, it's, that's what the flood means, an invasion of a, a horde of Roman soldiers. War will continue till the end of, of time for the Jews, and desolation will have been discreet, decreed. Verse 27, and Jesus will confirm a covenant with many for one seven, and in the middle of the 70th week, Jesus will put an end to sacrifice and offering in the earthly temple, and the temple, and at the temple, Titus will set up an abomination that causes desolation. That is the total destruction of the temple in, in, in Jerusalem until the end is decreed is poured out upon him. So this is my understanding of these four verses. So here again, I think God gave us a huge clue to absolutely prove that 457 BC date is the correct date. He calls this seven sevens. So let's look at the seven sevens, the 49 years that start this prophecy. It's a 49 year Jubilee cycle. I'll show you what that means here in a second. The 457 BC is the only date that is a Jubilee cycle. In my full three part video teaching, I go into more detail on this proof, but for a brief overview, consider the following things. So here's the first week. This is God's calendar, and I explained the difference in between these here in my other videos. 457, 56, etc. So we're counting down. So this is 1 7. So what does 1 7 mean? In Leviticus, it says God instructions, uh, instructing Moses in Egypt. Speak to the Israelites when you enter the land. The land itself must observe a Sabbath to the Lord. That's this last year here, Sabbath. For six years, sow your field, and six years, prune your vineyards and gather their crops. But in the seventh year, that's right here, the land is to have a year of Sabbath rest, the Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow the fields or prune your vineyards. Do not reap what grows of itself or harvest of the grapes of your unintended, untended vines. The land is to have a year of rest. So this is the year of rest. It's a Sabbath year. And the first year is a Sunday year. This is, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sabbath. Of course, the Bible doesn't call them Sunday. That's, that's our terminology. And we also found, and I showed this in my other video, this is a Jubilee year. This is the 50th Jubilee year from the last Jubilee cycle. So here's the first week, and the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. This is your 49 weeks. Seven weeks equals seven days per week equals 49 days. Using the one day equal one year key, 49 days equals 49 years. So we read in Daniel 9, 25. No one understand this. From the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one Jesus, the ruler comes, there will be seven sevens or 49 years. So the from is right here. From this very first year, there will be seven sevens. That's this 49 year cycle right here. That's one Jubilee cycle. So here we are showing the full 70 weeks, if you will. This is the 483rd year, and I've, I've, I've reduced this so we can see it on one little screen here. This is the 70th week in the middle of the week, which is a Wednesday year. That's 8030. Jesus will be crucified. So the command to rebuild Jerusalem was issued in the spring month of Nisan, 457 BC, and that's in our Julian calendar. And Jesus was crucified in 30 AD. This prophecy fits this illustration perfectly. It's amazing. So you might ask, why did Ezra start rebuilding the walls and the gates of Jerusalem? Why did he do this? 
So in Ezra 7.11 we read, this is a copy of the letter King Artaxerxes had given to Ezra the priest. You are to take with you on your trip to Jerusalem silver and gold that the king and his advisors have freely given to the God of Israel. You and your fellow Israelites may then do whatever seems best with the rest of the silver and gold in accordance with the will of your God. And anything else needed for the temple of your God, you may provide from the royal treasury. So do whatever seems best, and anything else you think you ought to do, do it. So the thing that we kind of forget in today's uh, world is that in, in these old days, there was no state or national police to come to your rescue, to call on you to protect your town from thieves, marauders, and uh, other enemies. So how did cities protect themselves? Well, they built high walls around their cities with gates that could be closed to uh, lock, off, lock off the city from their, their uh, predators. Here's a little picture of a modern day uh, Israel. And what do you think that is right there? That is a wall. That's the city wall around Jerusalem. It provides protection from invasions from tribes and robbers. And this was a common practice in the old days. If you've ever traveled throughout Europe especially, you'll see that all the city centers all had walls around them. So my thinking on the wall goes kind of like this. Uh, Artaxerxes gave gold and silver in 457 BC to rebuild and decorate the temple. And Ezra knew that if the city was not protected by a high wall and gates, that robbers would come and attack and rob the temple. So I believe Ezra felt that the king, uh, that King Artaxerxes gave him latitude to spend the rest of the gold and silver on whatever seemed best. And he thought protecting Jerusalem by building a wall around it would protect the gold and silver that he was using to rebuild the temple. So, uh, you know, the temple in Jerusalem was adorned with many valuable items of uh, silver and gold. It says in Ezra 7, 27, Blessed be the Lord of God of our fathers, which, which hath put such a thing in this decree in the king's heart to beautify the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. So at this time, the walls of Jerusalem and its footings were in rubble. So the question is this, do we think it's reasonable to think that Ezra would rebuild the God's temple and adorn it with gold and silver without a wall around the city to protect the temple and its contents from enemies and robbers. I think this is very reasonable to believe this because if they, if they were to redo the temple with, with the neighbors that they had around there, they would just come in and steal it. And we find that Jerusalem's neighbors were troublemakers. Now, I'm not going to read this. This is in Ezra 7, uh, 22, all the way down to uh, through 19 or 21 right here. So get your Bible out and kind of read that. But I'm going to rephrase this into my kind of modern day language. It says, Dear King Artaxerxes, I just want to, this is the people, the neighbors around Jerusalem writing this letter. Dear King Artaxerxes, I just wanted to let you know that these nasty Jews you sent up here are rebuilding the city and its walls, and we are only looking out for your best interests. If these nasty Jews complete this rebuilding, they will stop, well, oh, let me back up here. If these nasty Jews complete this rebuilding, they will stop paying you money. Check this out by looking at your history records. They did this in the past. Then the king answered, you Jews, stop rebuilding until I give you a specific command to rebuild. So the, the, the neighbors were uh, writing to King Artaxerxes and letting him know that the Jews were gonna cause him trouble and they would stop paying you money. This was about money. And so King Artaxerxes put a stop to this. 
So it made King Ar Artaxerxes worry that the Jews would not pay him his toll, tribute, and custom mo customs money if they rebuilt Jerusalem. So let me briefly recap my findings. In recap my findings in this whole study. The 70th week, the 490 year prophecy is based on what calendar? God's calendar. The order to rebuild Jerusalem was issued in the Julian year 457. The order to rebuild Jerusalem was issued in the spring or fall of 457. What was the biblical meaning of seven sevens? Well, that's a 49 year jubilee cycle. Was the order to rebuild Jerusalem issued in a Sunday year? Yes, it was the first day of the Jubilee week. Was the order to rebuild Jerusalem issued in a Jubilee year? Yes, it's also the 50th year of a Jubilee cycle. What is the biblical meaning of 77s? It's 10 Jubilee cycles or 490 years. What Jubilee year was Jesus baptized and anointed? 27 AD Julian. Who anointed Jesus? God or the Jews? God the Father and the Holy Spirit uh, uh, anointed Jesus. So what day of the week is the middle year of the 70th week? It's a Wednesday year. What year of the 490 year prophecy was Jesus crucified? It was year number 487 out of 490 years. Did Jesus meet all of God's requirement to celebrate Passover? Yes, 100%. And I go into this in more detail in my other videos. What day of the Passion Week did Jesus celebrate Passover meal? On Nisan 15th at midnight. In what Julian year was Jesus crucified? And that was 30 AD Julian. What Julian year was the Gospel Commission transferred to the Gentiles? Well, it was after the 490 years, so it was the 491st year, and that was in 34 AD. Does the 490 year prophecy predict the destruction of Jerusalem? Yes, in 70 AD, Julian. So let me uh, kind of round up this thing here with what is the big picture of this prophecy? Well, we've looked at the seven sevens, the 62 sevens, and the last seven, the 70 week prophecy. And we find that only 457 fits the rebuild cycle of this. Only 457 fits the seven sevens. Only 457 is a jubilee year. Only 457 is a Sunday year. Pilate was in power from 26 to 36 AD. He was not in power during 38 AD. Jesus was anointed by God in 27 AD. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in 27 AD. Jesus was crucified in 30 AD. And in my other videos, I show this from US Naval data that this was the only year that he could have been uh, crucified. 8070, Jerusalem it was in ruins. It was sacked by the Romans. And then the Gospel Commission was transferred to the, to the Gentiles. So there's not even a hint in the Bible that the 70 weeks does not immediately follow the 62 sevens. So this is my overall summary. This is one compact, very important prophecy that prophesizes the very year that Jesus was going to be crucified. So how does this fit in with everything else? Well, in Daniel 8, we read about a 2300 evenings and mornings. Says I will take 2,300 2, evenings and mornings, that's 2,300 years, then the heavenly sanctuary will be reconsecrated, consecrated, that'll be cleansed. So this 49 years was cut off of this larger 2,300 year prophecy. And that's the study that we just looked at now. Seventy sevens are decreed or cut off from the 2300 years in Daniel 8 for your people to repent. 
So from 457, we go 2300 years over to 1844. Today we're in a short delay before Jesus comes again. So we read Daniel 9.25, this was the start of the prophecy. And in Daniel 8, this was the end of the 2300 years. So we read this kind of an interesting quote from uh, C.S. Lewis. He says, we all want progress, but if you're on the wrong road, progress means doing an about turn and walking back to, in the right road. In that case, the man who turns back soonest is the most progressive. But haven't we all done this? Taken out our map, and we thought we were making progress. We were on the right road, but we found out we were on the wrong road. So some people that view this video might realize that they're thinking on the uh, coming rapture that they believe in and that this all started with 445 BC, they may realize that they were on the wrong road. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, walking back in the right road. And they're, they, according to C.S. Lewis, they're the most progressive. They're the smartest ones. So I'm gonna end this study at this point. And as I've already mentioned, please view my other three videos and the links are below for a more comprehensive study on Daniel 9. Thanks for taking the time to view this.